How you doing, everybody? Today, we're going to take a quick look at Spider-Man No Way Home. This was directed by John Watts and stars Tom Holland, Zendaya, and Benedict Cumberbatch. When we last left our web-slinging hero, Peter Parker's identity had just been outed by the recently deceased Mysterio. This puts him in an awkward position, obviously. Not only has his identity been revealed, but some people think he murdered Mysterio. This overwhelms him, and he asks Doctor Strange to cast a spell that will make people forget he's Spider-Man. But because Peter can't shut up for five minutes and let Doctor Strange cast the spell, it goes haywire and starts pulling in people from other universes. Essentially, we get one villain from each pre-Tom Holland movie, which leaves us one short of six. And I wonder if that was a conscious choice. We don't want to make this a Sinister Six movie, so just limit it to five. There, we're good. Peter wants to stop them from taking over and or destroying the world, but also doesn't want to just send them back to the point in their old universe where they left because that will almost certainly kill them. So he tries to come up with a way to stop and save them, and fan service ensues. I am going to try to keep this as spoiler-free as possible. I will say that what I expected to happen was largely what happened, although there were a few surprises here and there. There was a cameo I did not expect, not just in this movie, but indeed in any MCU movie, even though I guess this character was technically always part of the MCU, kind of. One cameo I did expect, but sadly this character didn't get to do all that much, which was a little disappointing. Overall, I did have a lot of fun with this. I really enjoyed all of the interactions between the various characters from different movie universes, and I thought they did a really good job portraying what can happen if a superhero's secret identity is revealed. It's certainly not the first time we've seen this in the MCU. I mean, Tony Stark basically just told everyone he was Iron Man. But that was a very different situation. For one thing, he's an adult and perhaps a bit better equipped to handle the pressure. Peter is still in high school. Stark was also filthy stinking rich, and Peter is very much not. Tony also had the advantage of, you know, not being accused of murder. And being in the public eye constantly, even when you're surrounded by people who actually like you, is a lot. And it's hard not to feel bad for the kid. I mean, he helped beat Thanos, and this is the thanks he gets. I love what they did with J. Jonah Jameson, although it's hard not to like J.K. Simmons in anything. I thought they did a really good job of satirizing Alex Jones and the like with this character, and I love how, at least initially, he's trying to portray himself as a serious journalist while filming out of his bedroom. I know, says the guy filming out of his bedroom, but I am not a journalist. I don't even play one on TV. It was great to see all these villains return from the previous Spider-Man movies. Like I said, we got one from each. Green Goblin, Doc Ock, Sandman, Lizard, and Electro. I did think it was a little weird that they went through the trouble of bringing back Reese Ephens and Thomas Hayden Church and then had them covered in CGI for almost the entire movie. Also weird that Electro looks considerably less dorky than he did in Amazing Spider-Man 2. They did at least acknowledge it, but just kind of hand-waved it away like wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey, he's different now. And I can't help but wonder if that was the director's decision or if Jamie Foxx just said, I'm not coming back to do this movie unless I can look normal. We got some really fun action sequences with all these different supervillains, including a brutal fight between Spider-Man and Green Goblin, where Goblin basically just slams him through multiple floors of an apartment building. I mean, damn. And I did think it was kind of cool that we briefly saw him in a costume that resembled his original outfit from the comics. Also found it interesting that this movie very heavily implied some sort of former friendship between Norman Osborn and Otto Octavius, which is odd because I'm pretty sure the Sam Raimi movies never mentioned such a thing, even though it's been implied in other media, like the PlayStation video games, for example. And because I've seen that in other media, I wasn't too confused by it, but I wonder if people who were strictly going by the movies were. The visuals are great all around, and because Doctor Strange is in the movie, we get some very trippy effects. And this movie will make you feel some shit. Not gonna give anything away, just... It is going to hit you, and it's going to hit you more than once. Overall, I enjoyed this very much. I found it a fitting tribute to the extended Spider-Man movie universe. I highly recommend checking it out if you're able to do so safely, or you can just wait for VOD if you prefer not to leave the house, which is totally understandable. And yes, this movie does have mid- and post credit scenes, although... The post credits is not so much a scene as a trailer for Multiverse of Madness, but you're probably still going to want to check it out. 
And that's all I have to say about Spider-Man No Way Home. Till next time, take care.